When I walked into the uh, uh, Maybe Center this afternoon and saw a thousand people in the choir and 70 pieces in the orchestra, uh, almost all of them were my friends because <laughs> I lived here for 15 years, but uh, I, I was blown away. One day, all of us will go on to be with the Lord, we'll be in heaven singing in this huge heavenly choir, and then the thought came, why not this side of eternity, we collectively pull our resources together and lift up a unified sacrifice of praise. 24 churches, about a thousand voices. When Mark called and said, praise the Lord, this is great. God with us really uh, emulates the heart of a worshiper. This musical is based on a lot of integrity music songs. A lot of them are written by Don Moen. And God is causing it to happen. He's drawing people from every denomination, every walk of life, uh, every culture. I'm carrying a banner. Yeah, Are I'm you feeling excited? better. You've got yeah, I think it's going to be a phenomenal business. production. We're so excited because it was a wonderful worship experience in our church, but then to multiply that times 24 more choirs, and that's going to be a wonderful celebration. The name that I'm lifting up is the name of Jesus. The banner that I'm carrying is the name of Jesus. It's exciting that my people can get to know who other believers in the area are, regardless of denomination, as we come together as one voice to worship and praise the Lord. We are crossing over the denominational boundaries, so we're focusing on our commonalities as opposed to the different perspectives that we might hold and realize that we can truly come together and be absolutely powerful for Christ when we are unified. It's thrilling. When I hear the choir sing, let there be glory and honor and praises, uh, I don't know that anyone else in the, in the building is going to be worshiping. I know I will be. God inhabits our praises, Psalm 22, verse 3. He is enthroned on our praises. And that's what I think is going to happen tonight as we uh, come together for all, uh, all across Tulsa, 24 churches represented, to uplift the name of Jesus. He will inhabit our praises. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar, draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are, in your dwelling place, in your dwelling place. Take me to the place where you are, cause I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, and surrounded by your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near. Draw me near to where you are, oh my God, you are my strength and my song. I just want to be where you are, in your dwelling place, in your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are, cause I just want to be, I just want to be with you. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. God said he will cause righteousness and praise 
to spring forth through all the earth. Today, everywhere you turn, there is a new song, a new spirit of worship, a new sound of rejoicing. Something significant is happening. God himself is doing a new thing among us. And the Holy Spirit is resurrecting living worship among his people, paving the way for the King to visit us in ways we've not known before. And just as we've sung, we want to be where you are. He wants to be where we are, in our towns, our churches, our homes, and in our hearts. I really believe God arranged for us to gather tonight because he wants to demonstrate his grace and glory. And as deserving as he is of our worship, and as much as he delights in our praises, he didn't design this practice for his benefit. Worship is for our sake, because worship is the atmosphere which welcomes his presence and gives place to his mighty works. So friends, this meeting is his idea. He brought us together tonight to move among us God with us.
Aren't you thankful God is with us? He's here. He's with us right now. It's some of you may be going through circumstances that make it difficult to believe that He is. Throughout God's Word, the invitation is clear. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But many of us feel unworthy and unready to respond to His invitation because of guilt. We focus on our weaknesses rather than on his great mercy. The blood of Jesus has made it possible for you and for me to come boldly to the throne of grace tonight, to receive mercy and grace to help in time of trouble. 
So let's respond to his invitation right now and enter in. Like weary sheep, we seek a fountain. Like lost children, we seek a home. There is a longing for the presence of the one who made us for himself. So call with me now. Lord, it's you we need. It's you we want. And we long to be in your presence once again. You see, God inhabits our praises. So he's here to meet every need you have according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So rest in him and let him work on your behalf.
for the Lord will go before you and his light will show Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. When we are weak, you are strong. And you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. You are El Shaddai, our fully dependable provider, so great and so faithful.
and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses Cast all your care on him because he cares for you. This is more than a promise. It's a command. So be at rest, child of God. You've placed your burden at his feet, your request in his hands, and your faith in his word. So let's rest in his promise tonight and worship him together in spirit and in truth, offering him sincere praise as we bless him. His holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing it together. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. 
Do you believe it tonight? <laughs> I said, do you believe it tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know, <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus is alive. <laughs> Do you believe that, choir? <laughs> All right. You know, our joy as we worship right now, gathered under his grace and surrounded by high praise, is not an escape from reality. And with all the power inherent in his presence, it's still a fact that all of us, all of us, face tough times. Times a lot different than these moments of celebration. But you know something? Tough times don't diminish the reality of his presence. Darkness will fall, clouds do gather, and shadows may come. But our faith and our confidence in Him need never be shaken. And when we face difficult times and trials, He will be with us to make a way. Let's sing it together. God will make a way where there seems to be. in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength. With love and strength. I remember receiving a telephone call from my mother-in-law late one night, and she informed me that my wife, sister, and husband had been involved in a tragic car accident. They had been on a way to a ski vacation in Colorado when their van was broadsided by an 18-wheeler. At that time, four young boys in the van, and Jeremy, the oldest, who was soon to be nine at the time, was killed instantly. The other three were all seriously injured. And I remember feeling so helpless when I heard the news that night, not knowing what to say to Susan and Craig. They're here tonight, by the way, sitting right down in the second row with Jason, Joel, and John Mark. And I felt like I didn't want to say something religious to Craig because he knew all the scriptures, the Bible teacher in his church. And I had to get on the airplane the next day and fly to another city. And as I was sitting on the airplane, I remember reading from Isaiah 43, how the Lord will make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And God gave me the words to this song. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. That's what I really wanted to say to Susan and Craig. God's working in ways you can't see. I wanted to give them a hope in a hopeless situation. He's working in ways you can't see. And you may be here tonight. You may or may not have gone through a situation like Susan and Craig. But you feel that God has forgotten you. I want to tell you something that God has inscribed you in the palm of his hand. And he is able to make a way tonight where there seems to be no way. Would you sing it with me one more time? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, 
pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 43.2. In 1989, our lives were changed forever when our long-awaited son, Marshall, was born seven weeks premature. For months, we struggled with the wires and beeping of a heart monitor while I became more and more convinced that our son was not developing normally. Although many people tried to assure me that I was being an over-anxious mother, we soon found ourselves in the, do in the offices of various doctors and specialists. And yet, through all this, we can look back and see God's hand upon us, leading us and working on that eternal part of our being that is more important to Him than even our temporary earthly circumstances. He has made a way for us through His peaceful, comforting voice in the two quiet nights when the whys and the what-ifs creep into our thoughts. He's made a way through the help and the gifts and the tears and the prayers of the members of the body of Christ. A year and a half ago, doctors informed us that Marshall's progress looked too good to be the suspected metabolic disorder. A second MRI revealed cerebral palsy, which is damage to the brain, resulting in abnormal muscle tone and control. Although Marshall's progress in motor skills may seem slow and his delays very pronounced, small miracles continually remind us of God's hand at work. Therapists have told us they never thought he would walk with a walker, nor speak as clearly as he does. And last January, our most fervent prayer was answered when we saw Marshall give his heart to Jesus. It would be impossible to describe all the changes and the good that God has brought to myself, Kurt, Macy, and others through Marshall. Only if you have lived through an experience in which you have allowed God to change you for the better can you understand when I say to you that we would not go back to what we were before for a hundred trouble-free lives. We know that God is in control of our everyday experiences. He wants so much more for us than that which a carefree existence can produce. We have learned that we are God's servants. He is not ours. And we now know that we can stand and say with the three Hebrew children who were faced with a fiery furnace, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. But if not, still, we will bow down to no other God God will make a way. Yeah. 
do it now in the name of Jesus. Make a way where there seems to be no way. God has promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. And in Christ, he has revealed his faithfulness to us from the beginning of time. In Genesis, Jesus is the ram at Abraham's altar. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Numbers, he's the cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he's the city of our refuge. In Joshua, he's the scarlet thread out Rahab's window. In Judges, he is our judge. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. And in Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's our faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of everything that is broken. And in Esther, He's the Mordecai sitting faithful at the gate. In Job, he's our Redeemer, whoever liveth. In Psalms, he is my shepherd, and I shall not want. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he's our wisdom. And in the Song of Solomon, he's the beautiful bridegroom. In Isaiah, he's the suffering servant. In Jeremiah and Lamentations, it is Jesus that is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, He's the wonderful four-faced man. And in Daniel, he's the fourth man in the midst of a fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is my love that is forever faithful. In Joel, he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. In Amos, he's our burden bearer. In Obadiah, our savior. And in Jonah, he's the great foreign missionary that takes the word of God into all the world. You go on and you see in Micah, He's the messenger with beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger. In Habakkuk, he's the watchman that is ever praying for revival. In Zephaniah, he's the Lord, mighty to save. In Haggai, he's the restorer of our lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is our fountain. And in Malachi, he's the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. In Matthew, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. In Mark, he's the miracle worker. In Luke, he's the son of man. And in John, he's the door by which every one of us must enter. In Acts, he's the shining light that appears to Saul on the road to Damascus. In Romans, he is our justifier. In 1 Corinthians, our resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, our sin bearer. In Galatians, he redeems us from the law. In Ephesians, he is our unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he supplies our every need. And in Colossians, he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he's our soon coming king. In 1st and 2nd Timothy, he's the mediator between God and man. In Titus, he's our blessed hope. In Philemon, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And in Hebrews, he's the blood of the everlasting covenant. In James, in James, it's the Lord that heals the sick. In 1st and 2nd Peter, he's the chief shepherd. In 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, it is Jesus who has the tenderness of love. In Jude, he's the Lord coming with 10,000 saints. And in Revelation, lift up your eyes, church, for your redemption draweth nigh. He is King of kings and Lord of lords.
Tonight, we have entered his gates with thanksgiving. We've entered his courts with praise. And we've seen through his word that God has always made a way for us. He is the God of the past. He is the God of the present. And he is the God of the future. Nothing takes him by surprise. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he's been here with us tonight, hasn't he? Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices and give him thanks for being with us tonight.
we thank you so much for your presence here. Thank you for sending Jesus, Emmanuel, to live in our hearts. Thank you for making your home in our hearts tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your presence here tonight, Lord. We love you. We appreciate you. I wonder if, just before we close tonight, you want to just sit down for one second and rest? I want to make sure that we don't leave here without giving the Holy Spirit a chance to do what He does so well, minister to those who are hurting and lost. And you may be here facing a situation that you feel there is no answer for. But I'm thankful tonight that we serve a God who specializes in the things that are impossible. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for that? That's the kind of stuff he loves. And you know what? You may be here with a financial need so great, you have, had, you have your back against the wall, and there's nothing more you can do. And that's a fearful and a wonderful place to be because you are utterly at the mercy of God. I don't know about the town you live in, but most towns, the banks are closed on Saturday night. And there's not a lot that you can do about your financial situation right now. But as we've spent these few moments worshiping Him, I know because God inhabits our praises, that he can turn the hearts of kings on our behalf tonight. Nothing is too difficult for him. You may be in the middle of a family situation that has brought you hurt and more hurt and loneliness. And I ask right now, in these moments, that the Lord would just move through this auditorium thousands of people here. Holy Spirit, I ask you to just pour your healing oil out on hurting situations. Hearts that are hurting, pour your oil of healing over that situation, God. Right now, make a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, God, we know that you are working right now in ways that we can't see. And how thankful we are for that. Hallelujah. We bless your name. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah. God will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my God hold me closely to his side love and strength 
with love and strength for each new